Boarding a bullet train on his way to Tokyo, the protagonist of the game comes across a sign on car number 7 that if he sees any anomalies, he should turn back. Not understanding what this entirely means, he stays on the train for what feels like hours, much longer than what he anticipated to reach Tokyo, yet not arriving with the train carrying on to move, with no sign of it ever stopping. Starting to feel uneasy, he gets up, observing three people seated further in the same car, moving to the next car, which turns out to be identical to the previous one, being car number 7 with the same people. The two adults are sleeping, with the kid telling the protagonist that he himself has noticed the train is looping, with no time being passed in real life, with the sister never waking up, not opening her eyes, no matter how much the little brother tries or how long he waits. He then continues that there are some anomalies in the cars and if the protagonist sees any, he should turn back. The goal is to reach the conductor's room, car number zero, and pull the brakes to put an end to the loop. The protagonist whom I will name Haruto finds all this too difficult to believe, yet going along with it, as he already feels too overwhelmed and tired sitting and waiting for the train to stop going to the next car in order to see if anything changes or if he could find a new person to speak with. This time around, everything seems to be just like before, apart from the kid being missing, giving Haruto a strange eerie feeling that something is terribly wrong, making him question his own sanity to how the same person can reappear in another car, making him consider he might be in an actual loop according to what the kid said. As he continues to the next car, he notices the number of the car being the same, with the same adults sleeping in their own seats, which according to what the kid says, means Haruto experienced an anomaly, but he didn't turn back, hence why he got trapped in the same car. This time around, going through the car to the next, he notices something very strange, a hole in the window of the train leaking water outside as if he is under the water or the sea. This doesn't make much sense to Haruto as something like this wouldn't be possible, as the train is not submerged underwater and it is outside in the open air, but when it comes to it, thinking how he even got there to begin with, he cannot remember, wondering if he has been kidnapped and taken here, not really knowing where he is, as the windows of the bullet train also are pitch black, not displaying what is really outside. Just when thinking about all of this, the window of the train shatters with a lot of water pouring in and soon flooding the car. Getting out of the car in a rush to avoid being drowned, he notices how the restroom section of the train doesn't get flooded with the water staying in car number 7, as if held in place with some sort of invisible barrier. Going through each loop, following the kid's instructions, at times Haruto misses anomalies, making him loop back to car number 7, and at times, when he manages to spot the anomaly and turn back, he manages to move forward to a lower numbered car. The anomalies tend to be mainly supernatural in nature and scary, as if being aspects of a lucid dream or things one would see when sleeping. For example, hands could be coming out the windows of the moving train, strangers could be hiding under the seats and monstrous faceless figures could be lurking around or watching Karoto from outside the train things that one could only see in their wildest dreams. Despite knowing he is in real life, Haruto questions himself if he is actually sleeping, trapped in it, yet not being able to wake up, knowing he has full consciousness and aware of what is happening, something he has never experienced in sleep. Stranger and more bizarre anomalies keep on appearing, with the seats of the car disappearing and the sleepy man on the train awakening, who stares at the protagonist. It feels as if this man is used as a prop for this intricate looping train, rather than being a real human being, as nothing goes through him, being speechless and not interacting. Other human-like anomalies appear, such as the cleaner lady advertising coming to life, with the actual human standing in front of the advertising being motionless. This makes Haruto believe many of the human looking entities on the train are not actually humans but hollow and empty objects given life to from the train. After experiencing some more eerie and bizarre anomalies, the protagonist finally manages to reach car number zero, when an announcement on the train speaker reveals there has been an injury on the train which has led to the train stopping momentarily to attend to the person's injured, with no further explanation to 
to who these people might be. Passing the restroom section, the kid suddenly appears in a bathroom stall, explaining to Haruto that he needs to also pass the premium seats and go to the conductor's room to stop the train. This time around, however, if he sees an anomaly, he should continue on and not turn back. In here, there are four different individuals who all seem to be robotic and props used by the train to distract the protagonist. There is an attendant with a trolley moving in a straight line, paying no attention to the protagonist and if not moved out the way, she would push against the protagonist. There's a woman who is working on her laptop with her screen being on the home screen and not moving. There's a man with long hair having glowing green eyes and a man stuck in his position trying to reach to the overhead luggage space. As Haruto goes to the restroom section, he meets an old man who questions him if he is actually a human or a mimic trying to trick him. That's when he explains that the people on the train are magic majority on human, used by the train to trick the real humans on the train, who are trapped there as passengers to reach some sort of an unknown destination. Strange occurrences take place, such as the already strange looking man with glowing green eyes getting a duplicate smaller head, a dark entity holding a false door and pushing it down the aisle, greenery and nature growing and overtaking the car and much more. Sometime later, Haruto comes across the kid standing on his own, seemingly crying in a defeated manner and tone, asking the protagonist if they will ever manage to escape and find a way out of this train alive. Haruto tries to reassure the kid, but not knowing what really is going on, he tries to stay honest and tells the kid he really doesn't know. That's when he moves on to the next car with a levitating woman having her face obscured with hair attacking him, making him reset the loop. This is according to what the kid said earlier, that if the protagonist would make more than three mistakes, the ghost would get him. Being more careful and perceptive this time around, the protagonist manages to spot all anomalies and reach the conductor's room, where he stops the train. Going back to the blue seat section, he observes the sister of the kid being woken up, confused to where she is, asking the protagonist if he has seen the kid, to which he explains everything, saying he hasn't seen him since stopping the train. Not knowing anything and how she ended up here, she explains that her brother's name is Naoki and that they should look for him. That's when she instructs the protagonist to go to the premium side of the train and restart the train to move while she goes to the economy side and passes the move button as well at the same time, which should theoretically end the loop. She explains that she saw this in an anime where the characters were stuck in a similar situation and that's how they managed to escape. There are two endings in the game. In the first ending, when Haruto follows the sister's instructions, the train comes to a stop with doors opening with blinding white light inviting the protagonist to go through it. This is a clear allegory to the protagonist going to a better place or in other words, heaven, explaining how he was trapped on a train and he had to pass some tests before moving on. The train acted as a vehicle which transported lost souls to the other world while being like a lucid dream with some other real human trapped as well, waiting for their final destination. Ending 2 is a little different, explaining the ending a lot more and being a little better. If Haruto in here refuses to go to the premium site and chooses to look for Naoki himself in the normal side of the train, he notices a dark blood pool by a restroom section. Worried, he goes to search for the kid when he gets attacked by the ghost which Naoki warned him about. This ghost seems like a demonic being who is there preventing the lost souls passing on to the next world, but regardless, due to being a good person in his previous life, Haruto manages to outrun this ghost. Despite some challenges in his way, portrayed in the rearrangement of the train, which leads to him getting to the conductor's room and pressing the button which brings the train to a slow stop. In the station, which has a nice surreal autumn vibe, Naoki stands patiently when his sister soon joins him, embracing each other in happiness and thankful for Haruto's help getting them in their final stop. 
they ask Karoto if he wants to join them, to which he says not yet, when they explain that he is right, and it is not his time yet, and that he has to get back home, when the sister mentions that she now remembers what happened to them, before waving goodbye to Haruto when the train starts moving again. That's when Haruto blacks out, finding himself lying on a bed, surrounded by the hostess and a doctor, explaining that he was out for a while, having a light form of deep vein thrombosis, or DVT for short, which is an acute and sudden medical condition, which is very deadly if not treated immediately. They then continued that the train also had to stop due to a personal injury of some other passengers, with the train conductor reporting that it involved a young woman and a boy, which indicates that the surreal looping train was the vehicle taking recently deceased souls to the afterlife. The old man was here, which means he had died recently. The young woman and the boy also were involved in an accident which took their life and explaining why she didn't remember anything and only remembered what happened to them at the end when they reached their destination and that they said it is not Haruto's time yet and that he needs to get home. This also explains in the first ending, when Haruto stops the train in the premium section, he goes through a bright door, which in that scenario would mean his ultimate death, passing to the afterlife. Eventually, a scene depicts both Naoki and his sister in a field with train tracks full of cherry blossom trees, happily moving forward, going to a better place, portraying that they are in heaven. So ending number two can be probably seen as a better ending, assuming Naoki and his sister only had each other in the world and they went to heaven together, not being alone. For the protagonist, he managed to survive and he possibly had a family, which means he has a much longer time to spend with them before his time to move on to the next life. And this brings us to the end of the video, folks. What are your thoughts about the story? Let me know down in the comment section below. As always, it's been your host, Star, and I will see you on the next one. Have a fantastic day.